This tutorial is all about the reactions of group 1 and why they have similar properties and also why they have uh, differing reactivity. What is it about the atoms of group 1 that allows them to have both a similarity in the type of reaction but also a difference in the vigour of their reactions. All the elements in group 1 have got one electron in their outer shell. So these elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium, are all going to react in a similar way because they all wish to lose one electron from their outer shell in order to get a full outer shell or a single plus charged ion. So Li+, plus, Na+, plus, K+, plus, and so on. One reaction that you need to know about is the reaction with water. So group 1 elements all react with water and they dissolve in water to produce hydrogen gas and an alkaline solution of the hydroxide. You will observe in school the reactions of lithium, sodium and potassium with water but you then need to be able to predict the properties of the group 1 elements rubidium and cesium with water and also be able to predict the physical properties of these elements from what you know about the other group 1 elements. When you put lithium on water, surprisingly it floats. It's a very low density metal. It fizzes in the water and it dissolves away. As it does so, gives off a gas. The gas, in fact, is hydrogen. If you test the remaining solution with universal indicator, it goes a purpley colour, showing it's an alkaline solution. The reaction of sodium with water is somewhat more vigorous than that of lithium in that it uh, still floats but it melts into a ball and skates around on the surface of the water fizzing away quite rapidly giving off again a gas which would be hydrogen dissolves quite quickly and leaves behind an alkaline solution just as before. Potassium is more vigorous still again it floats it melts into a ball and skates around rapidly on the surface but this one also bursts into flame. The heat of the reaction is enough to ignite the hydrogen which is being given off and it burns with a lilac coloured flame. The potassium rapidly dissolves and leaves behind a strongly alkaline solution. In summary then, the observations with water are similar but they get more vigorous as you go down the group. Uh, lithium also cuts fairly easily but potassium is the softest of these three elements. It's as soft as plasticine and also tarnishes very rapidly once it's been cut with a knife. In each case the gas which is produced is hydrogen and the solution which is produced is alkaline because it's a solution of the metal hydroxide. At higher level you might be expected to write both a word equation and a symbol equation. You may be giving some guidance, you might not. Well, lithium plus water will give you lithium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Lithium is Li and water is H2O. Lithium hydroxide is made up of two ions, the Li plus and the OH minus ion, so the formula is LiOH, and hydrogen is H2. So we see that we've got three hydrogens on the right hand side, but we've only got two on the left, so we're going to put a two there to increase the number of hydrogens. Of course, this has increased the number of oxygens as well. So I need to double the number of oxygens on the right hand side, but now I've doubled the number of lithiums, so the final balanced equation looks like this. For sodium and water, it's a similar story. We're going to get sodium hydroxide and hydrogen and the reaction will be as above 2Na plus 2H2O gives 2NaOH plus H2 for potassium and all the other ones again it will be similar so potassium and water would give potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen and 2K 
plus 2H2O would give 2KOH plus H2. Not only are all the equations similar, but obviously the formulae of the three hydroxides, again, very similar, because they all make a single plus charged iron. You might be given a table of data about the three elements that you're familiar with and then asked about the properties of rubidium and uh, cesium. Rubidium comes below potassium, cesium below that. Those are um, vials of each of those two metals, uh, which are very soft and very, very reactive with the air, so they're kept away from the air. Melting points you'd expect to be lower still than the potassium, and the reaction with water you'd expect to be very, very, very fierce, um, almost explosive. Here's a past paper question. Uh, sodium stored under oil because it reacts with water. Sodium reacts with cold water, makes a colourless gas, and an alkaline solution are made. What's the name of the colourless gas made here? It would be hydrogen. And the name of the alkaline solution would be sodium hydroxide. Francium is another alkali metal. It's at the bottom of group 1 of the periodic table. It's highly radioactive, so difficult to investigate in a laboratory. Predict how it will react with cold water. You'd expect it to float. Skates on the surface. Uh, dissolve. Uh, makes a gas, which we'd expect to be hydrogen, and an alkaline solution. of francium hydroxide and given the formula sorry the symbol for francium we'd expect two franciums plus two waters to make two francium hydroxides plus H2 and here's our answer uh, any one of the following observations of a colourless gas, fizzes, pops, makes colour solution, violent reaction, and so on, uh, products are hydrogen and francium hydroxide, and the balanced equation is needed. We now look more closely at why the group 1 elements have got similar properties. It's all higher level work. It's all to do with the fact that they all have similar atoms, but that their reactivity varies. There's a trend in reactivity because the size of the atom has changed. So group 1 are called the alkali metals. That's their nickname because they all make alkaline solutions when they dissolve in water. And the reactions are all similar because their atoms are similar. They all have one outer electron in the outside shell. And because the elements wish to become more stable by getting a full outer shell, they all lose that one electron uh, in their reactions. And as they all will do this in similar ways, so their reactions are very similar. However, as you go down group one, the reactions become more vigorous. And why is this? Well, this is because for each of the atoms, they want to lose one outer electron. And it's the ease of losing this outer electron which is important to understand. So as you go down the group, the atom becomes larger. There are more shells of electrons. This outer electron becomes further and further away from the attraction of the positive nucleus. As it becomes further and further away, it's also been shielded by all the inner shells of negative electrons which kind of mask the positive uh, charge of the nucleus and make it weaker. And so as you go down the group this outer electron which is further from the nucleus and more shielded becomes easier to lose. As that's what the element is trying to do, lose that outer electron, it becomes more vigorous in its reactions because it becomes easier to lose that outer electron. Now losing electron is called oxidation. Oxidation is loss and we remember this using this mnemonic oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So in each of the cases of these alkali metals reacting with water what's happening is that the uh, metal atom is becoming a metal iron in solution 
and it does this by losing that outer electron. Losing an electron is oxidation, so we can say that each of these metals, like the sodium above here, is being oxidized when it reacts with water. This question is about group 1 elements. Sodium reacts with water. Sodium hydroxide and hydrogen are made. What's the word equation for this reaction? Well, we've got sodium plus water, arrow, sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Potassium also reacts with water. The name of the products of this reaction will be potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. Lithium, sodium and potassium all react in a similar way with water. Explain why using ideas about electrons. All are losing one electron from their outer shell. Potassium is more reactive than lithium. Explain why using ideas about electrons. Uh, it is a larger atom. So it loses its electron more easily. And there's the answers to those questions. The last one, electrons are further from the nucleus or the electrons are easier to lose or it needs less energy to remove an electron. Sodium and potassium are both alkali metals. The word equation for the reaction between sodium and cold water is shown there. Potassium also reacts with cold water. A small piece of potassium dropped onto a bowl of cold water. What would you see? Well, here we're talking about observations, not inferences. So we can only talk about what we would see, that the potassium dissolves, fizzes. No point mentioning the hydrogen here because that's uh, not observable. All we see is a gas. Um, skates on the surface with a lilac flame. That should just about cover it. Potassium reacts with water much faster than sodium reacts with water. Explain why using ideas about the loss of electrons from atoms. Uh, potassium loses its outer electron more easily than sodium as it is further from the nucleus. Rubidium is also an alkali metal that reacts with cold water. The names of the two products would be, well, they'd be rubidium hydroxide and, of course, hydrogen. And finally, here are the answers. Uh, any two observations, such as floats on water, fizzes, bubbles, uh, potassium is a lilac flame, um, melts, forms a ball, colour solution, uh, and so on. Um, potassium uh, loses electrons more easily than sodium, so that's why it's more reactive. And uh, the uh, products are hydrogen and rubidium hydroxide uh, in either order.